Okay, part four containment. Hopefully onto the final part now. We'll try and whiz through this last bit. All about Vietnam from this stage in. We've seen two examples of containment first. Korea and Cuba, you have to be able to make judgments on how successful the Americans and the UN and the West were in containing communism in those cases. Here's the third one, probably the least, uh, the least glittering one as well. So by the time you've got to 63, um, uh, good times in the third form, you should remember the assassination of JFK brings in um, everyone's favourite Texan, Lyndon Baines Johnson, to the White House, sworn in on Air Force One, um, and he inherits... Uh, a policy of continuing escalation in, in Vietnam. There are 16,000 advisors in Vietnam by the time Kennedy is assassinated. It's an excellent test, test question if ever you, you get the chance for it. Uh, and they are trying to prop up at this time the corrupt and unpopular regime of um, the leader of South Vietnam, Zien. You want a good example about corruption and unpopularity? There you have over there, remember Quang Duc? The intersection in Saigon, there's the Buddhist monk who protested in 1963 about Diem's regime by setting himself on fire. Eventually in November 63, Diem is going to be ousted by a coup. He's going to be out, a military coup led by generals, and that's the pattern you're going to get in South Vietnam, one leader after another being replaced for being unpopular and corrupt and um, not dealing with what the people want at all. So it's a tricky situation that Johnson inherits in 63, and uh, he keeps Kennedy's policy going, he keeps pumping in more advisors. You're going to get a crisis point for him in 1964, in August, in the Tonkin Gulf, the waters off the coast of North Vietnam, where an American boat, American military ship, the Maddox, the USS Maddox, claims to have been attacked by three North Vietnamese torpedo boats and uh, the Americans are outraged by this, that they're not technically at war, they're only helping out um, a, a power, and it leads to Congress. The President can't declare a war. Uh, Congress passed something called the Tonkin Gulf Resolution. Tonkin Gulf Resolution, which gives Johnson the power to do absolutely anything he wants, take any means necessary to uh, restore the peace and achieve uh, security for America in that region of the world. It's not a declaration of war. America is still only ever helping out South Vietnam. There's no war ever declared, um, but we all know it's a war. And it means he's basically got a free hand to spend as much money as he likes on this because the president doesn't control the money, Congress controls the money. Um, and that leads to uh, February 65. I think we've lost some tech, tech problems. Johnson stepping up his efforts. Again, you must be able to talk about American increasing involvement and why the Americans became increasingly involved. And you've got, you want to answer this one, name of the operation where the major bombing took place. That's right, it's Operation Rolling Thunder beginning in February 65, North Vietnamese cities and harbours and Ho Chi Minh Trail which they used to supply all their, uh, the VC and their NVA units in South Vietnam through Laos and Cambodia, through the jungles. The major bombing campaign in North Vietnam um, stepped up by uh, Johnson's military. And then an American air base in the same month, February 65, it's called a Play Coup, is attacked. So if you're gonna have planes in Vietnam and military, Air Force bases, you need to protect those Air Force bases, and that's when Johnson makes the decision. Another reason why they become increasingly involved at the top of the domino theory and containment in March, send in the Marines. Three and a half thousand Marines came ashore at Da Nang, and those are the first combat troops, boots on the ground in Vietnam, and from that point, it's a very, very slippery slope. So, um, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the first, one of the first bits of major com combat, and then we'll talk about that, how, the, how the war is fought really quickly. November 65. That's one of the few open pitched battles in the way that you guys understand battles from World War II. Um, the Battle of the Yadrang Valley. You ever seen We Were Soldiers with Mel Gibson? Don't watch the films, alright? Read the book. The book's a phenomenal book. Um, this one is when. The North Vietnamese army took on the Americans in open warfare and they got annihilated, about 2,000 
North Vietnamese casualties versus 300. Um, I think it's dead actually, one of the cas no, it's casualties for the Americans. Uh, casualties. So the Americans, in a straight firefight, were always going to win, and it leads to realization that they have to fight the war in a different way. So loads of questions you can get on how the war was fought. We haven't got time to go into it all, and it doesn't fit brilliantly on the timeline. Um, how was it fought? How effective were the tactics? So much stuff you can talk about here. You can talk about um, guerrilla tactics for the communists, the 11% of men casualties, American casualties from booby traps, um, the communists basic hit and run tactics and initiating most of the conflicts. Nine out of 10 of all the combats in, in Vietnam were issue eight, initiated by the communists. The Americans are nearly always uh, on the defensive and caught off guard and ambushed. Um, you can talk about how they dealt with the civilians in, in Vietnam. And conversely, you can talk about American tactics and how effective they were, napalm, Agent Orange, the bombing and more dropping more bombs on uh, Vietnam the whole of World War II. Two thirds of the bombs are dropped on South Vietnam, the, the country they're supposed to be protecting. You talk about the cost, 20 billion a year, um, the Zippo raid, search and destroy. There is loads there, loads there. There's a whole sort of like 83 sheets worth of, of notes for you to talk about. They don't really fit with one particular year, but you've got to be able to know the tactics and how the war was fought um, and how effectively it was fought. And also, you should talk about problems that the Americans face within this, winning the hearts and minds of the Vietnamese people, not being allowed to carry the war into Laos and Cambodia that would have helped the Americans stem the tide down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Um, the role of the media, got to know about stuff like this. The role of the media, the morale of the troops, the age of the troops, no, 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 19, um, the tour of duty from the draft. Americans, you know, have a one year draft for all people between the age of 18 and 25, and after 365 days of getting some experience, they go straight home again. Um, the increasingly hostile public reaction, particularly students, particularly African Americans, it's a war where 11% of uh, the American troops are African American, but 22% of the American casualties are African American, so it looks like a, a racist war. Make sure that you can explain the problems that the Americans were having and the impact it was having on the war effort and what was going on back home around this time. There's no one specific event we're talking about there, it's just problems all, all told. Um, however, given all that, you would say by 18, 1967, sorry, In terms of conventional wisdom for how you won a war, the Americans were winning. Certainly by their estimation, they thought they were winning. The casualty count was massively in their favour. You had 13,000 American dead versus probably something like 200,000 communist dead. They thought they were winning the war. That unfortunately is not going to be borne out by the time you get to 1968. And at the Vietnamese New Year, January 31st, it was a holiday, there was a ceasefire going on between the two sides for the, the celebration of Vietnamese New Year. And the communists took a very clever advantage of that, planned a major offensive all across Vietnam, over a hundred sites, cities, military bases were attacked by uh, the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese army in uh, mass force, um, including Saigon, including the American embassy compound in, in Saigon, uh, and the ancient capital of Vietnam, Hue, a very pretty city in the, in the north of the country. Um, and it's a major effort to start a popular uprising, what they were looking for. Militarily, it's a failure, the Tet Offensive. It doesn't do what it was supposed to do. They lose 10,000 soldiers, the communists, 10,000 men lost. They don't get an uprising, um, they don't take Saigon, they don't take Way. all the cities are restored, they don't capture American bases, but in a bigger picture, it's a complete disaster for the Americans. General Luan, very, very famous photo, you might have seen it, it's really disgusting, with the blood pouring out the head of the um, suspected VC, um, Salvatore, who he executes at point blank range, it's a very famous photo by Eddie Adams. The media coverage, of 
TV cameras showing Americans fighting with inside the embassy compound in Saigon. You know, Amer actually American soil uh, is a complete disaster. The name of the American anchor man who's there, a guy called Walter Cronkite, who says, what the hell was going on? I thought we were winning this war. That starts to turn America against the war. If Walter Cronkite can't get on board with the war, what chance have you got of most of the Americans? So it's a complete disaster for the Americans in the long term. It starts to turn public opinion against them. Later on in 68, in March, you had the My Lai Massacre, one of the most horrific episodes in all warfare, perhaps, but um, things like this uh, do happen. They often get swept under the carpet. Um, this one doesn't get found out about for another year. It doesn't break until 1969, when there are pictures on front cover of Life magazine, Life magazine, you've got the execution, mostly of women and children, uh, of approximately 400 South Vietnamese civilians accused of uh, helping out the VC uh, in a massacre led by a guy called Lieutenant William Kelly. Uh, it's an ugly, ugly episode, but it is symptomatic of what's going on with the American military at the time, uh, very indicative of the problems they've got. Make sure you can explain perhaps why that happened or uh, what impact that had. Could get questions on on that sort of thing, um, and the war starts to turn against the Americans. It becomes more and more unpopular. Lyndon Baines Johnson announces, uh, even though the number of troops are at their peak, you've got five hundred thirty-six thousand troops in 1968. Over half a million American boots on the ground. Uh, they pump. You know, pumping 20 billion a year into that war, but Johnson says, I am not going to run for re-election. Announces, quit's the wrong word, but he's gonna, he's gonna not stand again for re-election in November 68, which means you're gonna get Richard Nixon taking over. Nixon comes in in uh, January of 69, and he's promising to deliver peace with honour. Peace with honour. What does that mean? Well, for Nixon it means they want to get out of Vietnam without losing the war, without humiliating America. Uh, I think you had a question in Mock, actually. Why does Nixon want to start withdrawing from Vietnam? That's a great question. It could be a 10 marker. Why do the Americans pull out of Vietnam? And why is it difficult to pull out? Why pull out? Why was it difficult to pull out? What are the problems about pulling out the Americans? Um, if they leave straight away, they're going to lose this war and the communists will take Saigon. Um, but Nixon's plan is to Vietnamize the war, Vietnamization. And pump money and advisors and equipment away in the South Vietnamese so that they can take over the bulk of the fighting. And um, he starts to plan a way out of the war. So his national security advisor, Henry Kissinger, and a man on the Vietnamese side, Lei Duc Tho, start to have peace meetings from 1969 onwards. There are many tricky issues to discuss and they rumble on for years, but you're starting to see the war winding down here. And with Vietnamization, Nixon is going to start pulling out troops. Between 69 and 71, he's going to pull out 400,000 troops from Vietnam. They're going to go back home. They're going to leave. That's the peak of 536,000. Um, the peace movement is gathering a lot of pace. It was the year before in 68 when Martin Luther King had said, you know, we spend, he got his figure slightly wrong, he said half a million um, to kill every VC person, but $53 per person in poverty. The promises of the Great Society have been shot down in the battlefields of Vietnam. In, in 69, you have the largest ever political process. Um, in American history, 700,000 people in Washington, D.C. It was in November 69, anti-war protest. You've got some fantastic um, anti-war songs that you might have heard in one or two lessons. The Animals, Neil Young, um, Creedence Clearwater Revival, about the Vietnam movement and uh, the American popular reaction to it. Um, we'll stop there and we'll finish off with the last one. Didn't quite manage to, I hope to squeeze it in that one. Didn't quite manage to squeeze it in. So last one coming up.